Hello and welcome to Spotlight World War Scene. Today is Thursday, November 1st, 2018. I'm your host, If, and today I'm here with... Hi, I'm Megan Conroy. I'm the Community Prevention Specialist with Ulster Prevention Council. I'm Cheryl DePaulo. I'm the Director of the Ulster Prevention Council. Hi, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having us. All right. Would you like to explain to us what the Ulster Prevention Center is or what they do? Sure. So Ulster Prevention Council, we provide uh, information and education about substance use prevention in the community. Uh, we have school-based programs. We do work here in the, in the Ellenville School District. We have a, a school-based program called Too Good for Drugs. Uh, we also have community prevention where we schedule things like trainings about current drug trends, um, vaping, which is what we're going to talk about today, and uh, really anything to, to support the community in, in reducing substance use. Well, um, as we all know, nicotine is addicting. And kids these days, instead of smoking, they think e-cigarettes or vapes are more safer. What do you guys have to say about that? Yeah, so I think this is a really important question. Um, it's definitely a misconception that's out there that a lot, a lot of young people have that using e-cigarettes is, is less harmful than smoking. Uh, and what we know is that there are no long-term studies that have been done about um, what long-term use of, of using e-cigarettes can do. Um, so that's something that we're really concerned about, things like popcorn lung, um, you know, the diff different respiratory issues that come, and like you said, nicotine being addictive, um, with, with youth introducing nicotine at a, at a young age, youth brains aren't fully developed until they're 25. Um, so starting with e-cigarettes at a young age could increase chances of addiction. Well, do you think e-cigarettes will keep the youth away from smoking cigarettes? Well, it's an interesting question because that's kind of been one of the uh, ideas that's out there, that this will be better, youth will vape, they won't smoke cigarettes. And uh, what we're finding out from research is that for the first time in decades, smoking rates of cigarettes are actually ticking up for young people, and we think that that's due to them starting with e-cigarettes. Well, now, advertisement is another thing. And, and I don't know about you, I, I walk into my normal store and there's like colorful, like the glass with, with e-cigs with e and cigarettes. Yes. And let's see, what, what was it again? How do t tobacco companies target the youth to get them to buy these e-cigarettes? Right, I think this is something really important to talk about and I, I think for youth to know too how the tobacco companies um, use these really strategic methods to target them and, and, and try to get them to become addicted to their products. Um, we have a visual up here. Um, tobacco companies, you know, they haven't really switched much of their tricks so much. Um, the, we have here a couple of advertisements from the 1960s. Um, you know, physicians, doctors saying that smoking's good for you and there are health benefits to smoking cigarettes. Uh, and we, of course, know what happened there, right? This, yeah. that, that it was actually really dangerous to smoke cigarettes. Um, and if we look at our next slide, we can see a lot of similar advertising. Not much has oh. changed, right? So the e-health cigarette and, you know, giving this, this conception that uh, smoking a uh, an e-cigarette is less harmful. Um, and tobacco companies too have, have started using platforms like Instagram because that's a lot of what young people use. Snapchat might have filters where, you know, the, sponsored by Juul uh, and also paid influencers on Instagram. So folks that have a lot of followers, you know, if you see someone with a lot of followers that's, that's using a, a Juul or another uh, vaping device, chances are they're being paid by the tobacco companies to, to be using that device. Um, so these are all, all methods that uh, tobacco companies use to target youth. Also, the, those fun flavors that are out there, the cotton candy, mango, all of those are, are intended to target youth. And, and I think it's really important to look at what the tobacco companies have been um, found to be saying about targeting youth. Um, they recognized early on, even decades ago, that they needed to uh, appeal to youth and to um, entice youth to smoke. And they actually call youth replacement smokers for long-term smokers who die. They need to replace them as lifelong customers. And we know that the chances of becoming addicted are much greater in younger years. The way that the brain is forming and developing, the risk of addiction is 
is much greater in the teen and early 20 years. And so the tobacco companies specifically want to get young people to smoke. They know that addicting them often, you know, early and often is, um, is their strategy. And I, and I hope that that makes young people kind of angry to, to know that they're being targeted because they need to replace people who are dying. Right, to, to kind of keep in mind who's profiting mm -hmm. off of the decision to start uh, using an electronic cigarette or a jewel. There's somebody profiting off of that, so something to keep in mind. Well, uh, do you think you can tell us the difference between, a, between vapor and aerosol? Yeah, so I, I think this is an important question too because what we hear a lot of times um, when we talk about vaping is, well, it's just vapor, right? It goes into the air and, and there's, there's no risk associated with it. Um, so what we know about uh, vapor is, is that it is something that goes into the air and disperses. Um, but actually, it, another misconception about e-cigarettes and, and vape devices is that it's not actually a vapor that's released, it's actually an aerosol. Uh, and the difference there is that there are particles that are, that are released uh, in that cloud of smoke that you see when someone might be using a vaping device. There are particles that are, that are released and particles that go into the lungs. Um, so those settle into the lungs. Again, the long-term health consequences of what might, that might be doing are not known yet. Um, but an important distinction to make is that it, it is an aerosol that's released by these, by these devices. All right, so do you think that, that people can get secondhand uh, smoke associated with e-cigarettes? Yeah, it's, it's definitely an issue. Um, we think of vaping as being kind of less intrusive to the environment and maybe not affecting people who are near uh, people who are vaping, but absolutely you're also inhaling those particles that are in the air. And, and some of those particles come from heavy metals that are used to, for the batteries and to heat that, that substance, that liquid up to a very high temperature in order to, to release the aerosol. Um, so there are heavy metals like cadmium and things that are really um, dangerous that are these particle matters that get into the lungs and even sometimes migrate to the, to the liver and other places. So it's important to stay away from uh, that aerosol cloud even if you're not the one that's inhaling the vape. Well, um, another question I have is, do all jewel pods contain nicotine? And is there less nicotine in a jewel pod than there is in a actual cigarette pack? So again, I, we, we focus a lot of our attention on the Juul specifically because it's found to be the one, the device that's really popular among young people. It's kind of known as the iPhone of, of the vaping devices. It's very discreet. Um, we have an image up here, just important for, I think, a lot of parents to see what it kind of look, looks like. It plugs into a computer and can and really be mistaken for a USB drive or a wireless router. Um, it's very discreet. Um, and something important to know is that all jewel pods contain nicotine. So any jewel pod that's purchased contains nicotine. There are other vaping products that might not contain nicotine, but for this specific device, every, every jewel pod contains nicotine. And one uh, jewel pod is equivalent to the same amount of nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. All right, so do you think you can talk about us about the new Tobacco 21 law and how it can or how it will how it will affect the e-cigarettes. Yeah, starting in January of 2019, the Ulster County Legislature passed a law that will um, raise the age for purchasing any nicotine products to 21. So we know that it's been 18 for uh, quite a while, and raising that age to 21. Uh, will significantly impact who can purchase nicotine products. And the basic idea behind that is that uh, we know that school is one of the places that people are being introduced to nicotine products. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we know lots of 18 year olds are still in, in high school. Um, so it kind of limits availability. And one of the best ways to reduce the use of any substance is to reduce its availability in the environment. So raising the age to 21 uh, will do that, and other counties surrounding us are also putting that into place. And that will um, absolutely apply to e-cigarettes as well as to all other um, nicotine products.
Well, thank you for having us again. And um, we do have, we, we have a youth media contest every year. So we're at the end of the show, we're going to play um, a video from a contestant, Jarrell, who made a great um, PSA about vaping. Uh, and we would encourage students, we're going to have the contest again. So we would encourage students to participate. Uh, and yeah, thanks so much for and having Jarell us. And is from Ellenville High School. Yes, right? Jarell is yeah, from yeah. Ellenville High School, Ellenville an important High School, note. Yes. We had two of our winners here from Ellenville, our radio, and TV winners were from Ellenville. You have a great team here. Uh, so again, we look forward to seeing more submissions. All right. So that was the Ulster Prevention Council, and it's located at 250 Aaron Court in Kingston. And for more information, you can call 845-458-7458. Or you can email mcornroy at family services ny.org. Thank you for joining us for this episode on Spotlight on Warsing, and we'll see you next time. <coughs> Vaping got in the way socially and physically. School students are using vapes at a higher rate than adults. More than 3 million high school students used vapes in 2015. Scientists have found that e-cigarette vapor could harm the lungs and make them more susceptible to respiratory infections. E-cigarette vapor alone produced mild effects on the lungs, including inflammation, shortness of breath, and protein damage. Safer is not the same as safe.